after knowing the cutaneous nerves which are present at the pectoral region, now I want to discuss about what are the cutaneous vessels. There are two groups of cutaneous vessels which are seen in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. One group are related to the anterior cutaneous nerves and the another group are related to the lateral cutaneous nerves. The cutaneous vessels which are related to the anterior cutaneous nerves or which are accompanied with the anterior cutaneous nerves are derived from the internal thoracic artery. So we can say that they are called as the perforating branches. So here the perforating branches of the internal thoracic artery gives off branches to the anterior aspect, anteromedial aspect of the thoracic region or we can say these are the cutaneous vessels which supply the anterolateral aspect of the pectoral region and these perforating branches of the internal thoracic artery are accompanied with the anterior cutaneous nerves. So I am repeating again there are two arterial groups which are seen at the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. One group is related to the anterior cutaneous nerves. They are called as the perforating branches of internal thoracic arteries. Remember here that these cutaneous vessels are actually very small branches. But in females, the perforating branches of internal thoracic artery at the level of T2, T3, T4, T5 are longer because they are giving arterial supply to the breast region. And if you talk about the second group or called as the lateral group, which means the lateral cutaneous vessels, they are derived from the posterior intercostal arteries, they accompany with the lateral cutaneous nerves. So remember, one is, one group is accompanied with the anterior cutaneous nerves, they are called as the perforating branches of internal thoracic artery. Second is, a second group is accompanied with the lateral cutaneous nerves. They are the branches of the posterior intercostal arteries. So these are the cutaneous vessels which are seen at the pectoral region. That is the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. So what are the contents I told you? In the superficial fascia of the pectoral region, first moderate amount of fat. Right? After you incise the skin, you can see superficial fascia, you can see some moderate amount of fat there. After you remove the fat, you can clearly see the superficial fascia where it contains the superficial, uh, the way, uh, where you can see the cutaneous nerves as well as cutaneous vessels. What are cutaneous nerves? Cutaneous nerves are totally three groups. Supraclavicular, anterior cutaneous, lateral cutaneous. Right? And the supraclavicular group of cutaneous nerves are derived from C3 and C4. The anterior as well as the lateral group of uh, the lateral cutaneous nerves are derived from mainly T2, T3, T4, T5 as well as T6. Now when you are talking about the cutaneous vessels here, the cutaneous vessels are also accompanied with the cutaneous nerves. The anterior uh, cutaneous nerves are accompanied with the perforating branches of the internal thoracic artery. And here the branches of the Posterior intercostal arteries are accompanied with the lateral cutaneous nerves, right? So after knowing the contents like moderate amount of fat, second is the cutaneous nerves, third is the cutaneous vessels. Next I told you that it contains the, an important structure in the females called as mammary gland. Anyway, we are going to study the mammary gland in detail in a separate topic. So after mammary gland, another important structure which can be seen in the superficial fascia of the pectoral region is the platysma. So what is platysma here? Platysma is a subcutaneous muscle. When you are talking that it is a subcutaneous muscle, the muscle is seen immediately beneath the skin, which means it lies over the superficial fascia. So, the platysma is a subcutaneous muscle. Actually, this muscle is related to the neck region. But, why we are talking in the pectoral region? The fibers of this muscle called as platysma, because it is a broad sheet of muscle, and the fibers of this platysma arises from the pectoral fascia, which means it is not, not from the superficial fascia of the pectoral region. 
it arises from the deep fascia of the pectoral region called as pectoral fascia. Remember, whenever you use the word called as pectoral fascia, you are talking about deep fascia and not the superficial fascia. When you are talking about superficial fascia, you have to spell clearly that superficial fascia of the pectoral region. But when you talk or when you say pectoral fascia, think that it is deep fascia only. So here I want to say that platysma is a broad sheet of subcutaneous muscle uh, and the fibers of the platysma arises from the upper part of the pectoral fascia that is the fascia which covers the pectoralis major muscle. After the fibers arising from the pectoralis pectoral fascia, the muscle which uh, runs upwards medially, after the muscle which runs upwards medially or we can say the fibers which runs upwards medially crosses the clavicle, after it crossing the clavicle it reaches the neck region and after covering the important structures in the neck like external jugular vein, it mainly covers the external jugular vein in the neck. After covering the external jugular vein, it finally attaches to the base of the mandible. Not only attaches to the base of the mandible, it also gives attachment to the skin over the posterior and lower part of the face. So here I want to tell you that platysma is a thin broad sheet of subcutaneous muscle and the fibers of the muscle arises from the deep fascia of the pectoral region called as pectoral fascia. After the fibers arise from the pectoral fascia, the fibers runs upwards medially and it crosses the clavicle, reaches the neck region. Finally, it gives attachment to the skin over the, uh, it gives attachment to the base of the mandible and skin over the uh, lower part of the lower part and posterior part of the face. And this platysma is the muscle is mainly innervated by the facial nerve. So whenever you draw the angle of the mouth or whenever when the angle of the mouth is pulled down, this muscle contracts. And uh, whenever this muscle contracts, you can see wrinkles over the neck. So remember, the wrinkles over the neck is mainly due to the contraction of this muscle platysma. So uh, by this you can say that whenever the facial nerve is paralyzed, uh, you can see the loss of wrinkles over the neck. Why? Because the platysma becomes paralyzed and you cannot see the wrinkles over the neck when the angle of the mouth is pulled downwards. So by this, in the superficial fascia, we finished all the contents except the mammary gland because we are going to study the mammary gland anyway in our next chapter. So what are the topics we covered in the superficial fascia here? We studied what are the contents. One is moderate amount of fat. Second is the cutaneous nerves which are present. Next is the cutaneous vessels and at last we studied the platysma.